So welcome back everybody. Boy, do I have a fun episode for you today. Literally my dream attachment on my dream piece of equipment. It's all come together. If you've been watching the channel for a little bit, you know we just invested in us a Bobcat E35 and I told you one of the main reasons I wanted an excavator was to help me in the wood yard, the traditional digging, but mainly because I wanted to run some sort of mower up front right here to help us out around the property. So y'all, here it is. I just got back from the hydraulic shop. I had to go get custom made hoses and fittings. You're gonna have to do that for whatever type of excavator that you have. But here it is, my Bombalite CXC 530 mower. So if you take a look underneath, this is a 30 inch mower and we have tried to do everything we can to size it to my size machine. In typical Bombalite fashion, everything is absolutely robust and appears overbuilt in a way. So it's a large mower, a huge hunk of steel, 30 inch cutting width, depending on the size machine you have, they have other models. Next one I think goes up to 40 inches. Now there's something else worth mentioning y'all. I'm telling you, there's a lot of excavator mowers on the market, I've looked at some of them, and they're typically a one size fits all and you pray that your machine is the right machine for it. What I love that Bombalight does was I spent time on the phone with one of their engineers before the order was ever placed for this right here. So not only do they have multiple size mowers, by by the way, they have mulchers, tree shears, tree cutters, everything you can think of. This disc mower seemed like the right thing for the type of work we're gonna do. So not only do they have different sizes, but you can get different size hydraulic motors in there. So underneath this plate right here is the hydraulic motor that drives this right here with these cutters on it. We'll talk about all this in a second. So the reason that's important and the reason that's awesome was because not every machine has the same PSI and not every machine has the same flow rate on the hydraulics. So if you've got an excavator with with auxiliary hydraulics like I do here on my Bobcat. Well, depending on the brand, the size of the machine and all, the flows are gonna be different. Again, the PSIs, and that really determines what size motor that you should have in here. On the one size fits all machine, that's a problem. You may invest a few thousand dollars in a cutter like this, get it there and realize, well, my machine just doesn't have enough flow. These small mini excavators are very low on flow and PSI, but it's critical that you get the proper motor. Well, after spending time with them, they know the exact flow of this machine under load flow, not factory specs that are typically overrated talked with them, they gave me two different motor options and I ultimately went with what they thought was the best motor option for this. There's one below it and there's multiple motors above it. I just did not have enough flow for it. So we're gonna find out today's episode once we start doing some cutting, if we've sized everything correctly. But that service that you just don't get with all these other mower manufacturers out there that just has a one size fit all for your excavators. By the way, they went ahead and set me up with a bobcat mount. You're gonna to have to order different types of mounts depending on what type of excavator you have. They have all those mounts in stock. You can also move it back to here in this position depending on how you're wanting to mow and cut. The main thing that I've got this for right here, y'all, we literally have miles and miles of tree lines all up and down the property. We have trails and everything else. Well, with miles of tree lines, I am not interested in going up and down, especially when it's 100 degrees like today with a pole saw. And my property has just become so overgrown it's crazy. Now from the comfort of a cab with AC going and music in my ears, I can reach way up in the air and trim all my tree lines. Obviously with this being this type of cutter, I can mow on the ground as well. So I can do brush clearing, everything you can imagine. But I've got a sweet Bombalite brush mulcher on the back side of my tractor that I'll use for on the ground heavy clearing. This is gonna get everything up high. That's what I wanted it for. So if we take a look underneath on the cutter side, I mean, that looks like one inch uh, solid plate right here. Again, that's bomb light for you. Everything is nice and overbuilt. These cutters right here, they just fling out kind of like a rotary cutter on a tractor, except what actually does your cutting is right here, this ground off edge. It's kind of nice and sharp. This is AR400 steel. Maybe you see that. That's that robust stuff that's like on shooting targets, the bulletproof stuff. The cool thing is this also come with a free set of blades on the pallet. So I've got another set should I hit something and damage one of these. So you can see these fling out from the side, that's awesome. So now I can go along a tree line like this and just literally pop limbs off as I go. So if y'all are curious and happen to have a Bobcat E35 and like the way this performs, this is the motor option that I got, the HX510, up to 19 gallons a minute of flow, 13 to 18 rated. This is 14.9 under load. So we're gonna be right in the sweet spot on this. There was a motor below it that I could have got higher RPMs, but this is a little more robust, higher flow motor. So it seemed like the right choice for what I'm gonna do. Here is the model cutter that I got, the 30 inch CXC 530. 
weighs 550 pounds. At first, when it showed up in the crate, I was like, man, that looks massive for this. But then once you get on the front of the machine, oh, this machine handles that just fine, even at full extension out there mowing. Now my Bobcat has diverter valves up front so I can take the thumb controls and I'll run the mower. So either I can run this up and down, which will kick the mower on and then back off, or my Bobcat has a function down here where we can turn on the auxiliary hydraulics. Now we can turn on full flow by pressing this button underneath. And as you can see, the mower just kicked on. We'll go ahead and rev the machine up and it's spinning. camera didn't do it justice y'all from 12 feet up i'm guessing i can go higher to the ground level just complete destruction i tell you at the moment this little mini excavator is running this just fine it doesn't sound like it's struggling at all now we haven't gotten no big stuff yet but i mean i just knocked all the limbs down from up here and went over the ground real quick this is probably some of the biggest stuff that i cut uh we're definitely going to try it on some bigger stuff because it's rated for much bigger than that as well built as it is now i could stomp it on the ground and mulch this up but i think i'd rather just come out here and probably just rake all this out there since this is a manicured part of lawn that we hit with the zero turn when we're on the trails and all i'll probably just put this on the ground and bust all this stuff up but yeah just cut back several feet of limbs in just a few minutes
Oh my goodness, y'all. First impressions, I am in love. This is exactly what I've been looking for my entire life, especially since buying property. So here's what I'm talking about. I've got the limb all the way down this, that, all the way back around here, the other side of this, the back side of the property that way, and then we have trails that goes through 30 acres of woods out here. Plus, I've got a limb all the way back around the property. I wasn't joking. When you add it all up, it winds up being a few miles. Cutting it by hand, forget about it. So here's gonna be a good test. This area has always aggravated me. We have grown out and lost 15 plus feet since we bought this property years ago. It's just small oaks that grow up everywhere. Now these limbs, some of those are six inch oak limbs. We can't cut those with something like this. We would need a tree saw or tree shear for that. This is made for doing just what you're seeing, brush clearing, limbing, stuff on the ground, grass, all that stuff, and it's doing an excellent job. But this is a good opportunity for us to do some testing in here. You can see where I've already come on with pole saw cutting. I mean, these are oak limbs, they're pretty robust. Some of those up there are two and a half to three inches, which is probably gonna be max capacity on this. Not necessarily the mower, but I think the machine's hydraulic flow and capacity. This is one of those situations we don't know till we try. But these limbs have been growing up for years, driving me crazy. Let's go ahead and start cutting some back right here.
All right, that was a test I'm sure some of you are gonna wanna see. It's so cool whenever you see people have excavators and cut off a tree and just grind it to the ground. So we did several different sizes right there to show you, not necessarily what the machine's capable of, what the hydraulic flow out of the Bobcat is capable of. So I should mention the cutting capacity on this particular unit with the size motor that I have in it is around two and a half inches for the flow of my machine. That's not what this is capable of. You put a bigger motor and all, it's capable of a whole lot more. But they have a really good brush cutting chart online and it was telling me expect around two and a half inches. That's fine, anything bigger than that, I'll bring a pole saw out for. My property is riddled with everything, you know, thumb size, this size, just everywhere. That's what I'm trying to blast through. All right, so there was a couple sweet gums and another little hardwood right here. We can take a look right there about that big around i was able to just go down about as quick as i want and just mulch those to the ground shred them and throw them everywhere no issues for that now when i went over to this oak right here that is way above the cutting capacity for my size motor and the flow of this machine this thing is probably on a four inches across down there way above what I'm supposed to be cutting. Yeah, I had to grind a little bit, stop, grind a little bit, stop, letting the uh, hydraulic flow speed back up. That's to be expected. I already knew I was pushing that too far. I know a lot of you are gonna be asking, aren't you scared about hitting the glass and all? No, really none of that stuff is flung up here today. There is something I've learned though, the blades spin this direction. So when you wanna go cutting into something, cut from this side so it's slinging it away from my excavator. When you cut on this side, yeah, I guess it can throw some chips and stuff back. So cut on that side to be safe. And when you're going down and mulching stuff, tilt the head back just a little, because when you're down, blades can throw back to you. When you're like this, it literally throws stuff in the ground. So just have a slight tilt on the cutting head when you're going into stuff, you're nice and safe. Man, oh man, oh man, I am like a kid at Christmas. This is such a lifesaver for me. Oh my goodness, y'all. I've just been putting off for years dreading cutting all these limbs, just watching my property grow back, watching stuff smack the glass on my tractor when I come mowing, smack me on the mower on the zero turn. Oh, those days are about to be over. Check this out. This thing is a beast, y'all. I love it. Well, it's no longer new and shiny, that's for sure. We got stuff everywhere. We're scratching stickers and scratches on it, beating it up on all those limbs, but that's what this thing is made for. I expect these cutting blades to last a really, really long time because they're not your traditional sharpen and edge style. You know, they're designed to take chunks out of a limb. And boy, are they doing it. Let's look at some of this stuff because uh, you may be interested in this. Many excavators are becoming very popular and I just can't see why you wouldn't want a mower on one. They're so useful. So y'all, hopefully the camera did it justice, but I just cleared out in a full tree line. This stuff was all the way out to here and just everywhere. I couldn't mow, I couldn't get underneath it. And now I've got a straight tree line that was amazing. So all the stuff on the ground, I'm not mowing low, you can see I still got grass and stuff. Um, it is shredding this stuff up. If I go over it, it just kind of starts busting it up and shredding it like this. So what I'm gonna do is just come back either with the Bommelot mulcher, but as thin as this stuff is, I'm probably just gonna put my rotary cutter on. None of this stuff's gonna hurt it. Come through here a time or two and just keep shredding it down to more stuff and it'll rot before you know it. So as you can see, see where the tree line is now? My new tree line? Well, look where I got to go. We've got so much stuff down there and oh my goodness, the vines that we have. Y'all know how much I hate vines. Like vines everywhere on our property. Now I can just blast through them with this thing. So let's go take a look at some of these limbs I cut down here, y'all, because I cut to its absolute max capacity today. I couldn't really hear outside how much the mower was slowing down. I'm in a cab. I'm sure the blade speed slowed down some when I got into good stuff and then would speed back up with the hydraulic power, but it didn't really sound like I was working the machine hard at all. And I should mention, I have been watching like a hawk, my coolant temperatures, my oil temperature, and hydraulic oil temperature. I really thought this being a hot day and running a heavy demand machine like this, that my temperatures were gonna fly up and I was gonna have to call it quits. No, they're still like in the middle of the temperature range. They are perfectly fine. I am so pleased to say after a decent amount of time cutting, hydraulic temperatures are perfect. All right, so you can see what we're doing. We just come along here and just blasted through this stuff. Y'all, this is so nice. I haven't seen my tree line look like this since, well, 
since when I bought the property 11 years ago. Like I literally just gained 12 to 15 foot of room right here. The limbs were all the way out here. You can see where I've been driving around. Oh, that is so nice. What's up, buddy? You looking for me? It's mighty hot for you to be down here. Was you looking for me? You found me. So let's talk about some of these oak limbs I cut up here. This is where I put it test. I didn't think my machine was gonna have enough hydraulic flow to cut some of these limbs. Y'all, it did it. That limb right there is approaching three inches, oak limb, and I was able to cut it. The way I see it, when you get the limbs this size right here, it's time to pull out the pole saw. That's not what this is really for. What this is for is just going along and busting stuff, you know, this size and smaller, and then all this spindly stuff that's just easy to go through, but just aggravating for you to cut. I mean, it's everywhere. I can just mow through this about as quick as I want to. All right, so yeah, we'll come back and just keep mowing over this, busting this stuff up. No point in shoving that in the dirt over and over and over. I'll use it for tree trimming, and uh, we'll use the tractor to come back and take care of all this stuff on the ground. I'll put a link down in the description. Go check out. They got all kinds of mulchers. They got mowers. Again, everything under the sun. Stuff for tractors, excavators, skid steers, anything you could imagine. They probably have it, and it's extremely well made, and they'll ship it right to you. We appreciate them supporting the channel so much, and we appreciate you. A lot more equipment content coming.